Welcome to the Swim Swam Podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges. Joining me today, we've got a very special guest. He swims for the Greater Somerset County YMCA, where he just went off at the 2021 YMCA Spring Festival. He's a Cal commit. Today, we have the pleasure of sitting down with Jack Alexi. Jack, what's up, man? How's it going? Um, nothing much. It's great to be here. excited to talk to you this is this is my first time talking to you so i'm excited to get to know you a little bit um, i want to start with that 2021 ymca spring festival you dropped 42 6 in your 100 free 19 6 i believe in the 50 free and 135 in the 200 free am i missing anything did you swim any more events there yeah i swam the 100 back and i was a 47 7 there Nice. Was that a best time as well? Yes, it was. So, okay. So you were, I'm going to say four for four. I'm pretty sure you tied your best 200 yard free time of all time. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. yeah I was right. right on it. Exactly. Okay. So we'll, I'll take that tie, tie counts. So you were four for four for PRs there. Um, can you tell me about your preparation for this meet and, and how you felt heading into it? Yeah. So, um, obviously this season has been like really crazy and we didn't really know whether we'd have a championship meet, um, at the end of the season. So, and this was a very different meet than why nationals when the whole country comes together and races against each other. This is just New Jersey teams coming together. Um, but it was very different. And, um, my training was, a little different than past couple of years, as you probably don't know, but we merged um, this past year, we merged with Somerset Valley Y, and that brought us to greater Somerset County Y. Um, but my training was basically um, like six days a week, hour and 30 minutes in the water, uh, lifting twice a week. And, you know, it was really like a good training cycle leading up to the meet. And I really enjoyed training with Matt and other kids on the team. And I, felt, I felt like I was really prepared for the festival. And I was really excited to get racing again and tapered and shaved and going fast. So I was really excited. Was this your first shave and taper meet uh, since the pandemic started? I actually had a couple of inner squad meets at um, one, of, one of our YMCA's. And I, I shaved and tapered a little bit of that. And I got a new best in my 50 free. And I think I was on the 100 free there, but I didn't get a best time in that. But um, it was a very good, very, it felt very good to swim some fast times after this hard year. And it's like bring, like bring some self confidence back to myself and just be like prepared for the next couple months. So it was very nice. Yeah. Can you tell me about this uh, 42 600 free? You went 43 8 in the morning to take top seed into finals. And you went 42 63 at night, which brings you 14th all time uh, in the 17 18 age group, right behind Nathan Adrian. Uh, it would have put you at number three on Cal's current roster for this past season in the 100 yard free. Um, can you, can you take me through that race and, you know, after cruising a 43, eight in the morning, did, did you, were you pretty confident there was more in the tank for the finals? Um, to be honest, like I was going for warmups on um, that finals night. I didn't feel like good particularly, but I kind of just, um, whenever I like feel like that during warmups, I kind of just like breeze it off and just kind of like remind myself to do my, to do my thing and try to remain confident in myself. Um, but yeah, in the hundred, um, it's definitely my favorite event. And in the past year or so I've been trying to master like going out on the first 50, going out really easy speed and work really working the second half of the hundred. So that was my main focus on that. And obviously like, I wasn't really like thinking about that during the race. I was just kind of just going. Um, but I was very surprised to see a best time there and I was very happy with it. 
Nice. Has, has that been a focus for you in training and practice? Uh, you know, maybe this past year, the past six months of really working that easy speed going out and then working the second 50 coming home. Yeah, definitely. And this year we, when we merged teams, um, our practice, our train, my training style kind of shifted a little bit with the, with the changes of coaches. And we definitely worked more sprint freestyle as compared to the past couple of years freestyle and distance freestyle sets that's gotten my endurance up um but i definitely worked my sprint freestyle more this year and i feel like it translated nicely into my 50 as well yeah you went under 19 i'm pretty sure for the first time in february and then you dropped a 19.6 uh, at this meet i mean were were you pretty confident that i'm, I'm guessing 19 is something you might have had your eye on for a while yeah, definitely. I, I, uh, <laughs> I've been going like 20 points, 20 point O's since about here. So it was very, that's been very, a very frustrating race for me. Um, and it was, I got, I went 19, nine at juniors in 2019, I think, but I got DQ'd for a false start. <laughs> so I was pretty disappointed with that. Um, but it was definitely great to see, by 19, I oh, went 19.8 at the, the earlier this year in February. Um, it was great to get under, get to get the best time in that um, last month. So, uh, so you mentioned yeah, your, your training partners with Matt Fallon, who um, was a was another standout from this meet and from the Greater Somerset County YMCA. Um, he's he's a pen commit. We've talked. I've had him on the podcast. We talked to him after he came to a meet. Uh, in my home state of Texas in December. Um, you know, it seems like you guys swim not very similar events. He, you know, he's, he's more of an I am and breaststroke guy. seems like you swim freestyle with some backstroke in there. Uh, but what is training like with Matt? And I'm curious if, if you guys push each other in practice and, and what that looks like. Yeah, we definitely push each other in practice. Although he swims, I am and breaststroke stuff. He can definitely keep up with me and uh, some of the free workouts and in case he sometimes even beats in some of his print free workouts, but he's definitely one of my favorite training partners that I've been with in the past couple of years. And he's really been able to push me just like to that next level and just overall making practices more enjoyable and more, more like focus and practice. So he's definitely a great training partner. Uh, do you, do you guys have a lot of other teammates um, who who are at the level that you are? Because I mean, y- you, Matt. I mean, you you guys are top twenty recruits in the nation, and you know, especially when you're looking at colleges. Obviously, you've both made verbal commitments, but maybe when you were, um, were you, was that something that you guys leaned on each other for? Just because you both understand the level of dedication and commitment you have to swimming. Yeah, I'd say definitely, but we also have a couple of other guys on our team that, you know, um, help me push, like, in IM workouts. They especially help me push myself. But even during sprint-free workouts, you know, for me, they're in practice, and I'm sure this is for everyone. Uh, like they don't, We don't necessarily go full speed in practice cause, just because we're not, like, tapered and shaved down, you know? So we're kind of at the same level and same, like, disadvantages, I'd say during these practices and we have a lot of teammates, a lot of, we have a lot of elite group of guys that make the, make a great training, training environment and great team environment and make practice enjoyable. And it's really great. That, that, that sounds like a great environment. And that brings me to my next question. You mentioned that uh, two YMCA's came together recently to make this greater Somerset County YMCA. Um, can you tell me about wh- when that transition happened, you know, how, how you were able to move through that and what changes it brought? Cause I'm assuming, uh, you, you probably got some new teammates and, and maybe your normal routine was disrupted a little bit. Yeah. So we merged this past September and, and it was a little slow to start because we were just going back and forth between different pools and stuff and different practice times. At first, it was pretty, um, pretty hard and challenging to stay on top of that. But 
Um, and as well as like a new brand new coach, you know. Um, but I've definitely seen a difference in like the training map and the practice methods and stuff like that. And I honestly feel like this merge has been for the best. And I feel like it's benefited a lot of different people on our team, as well as putting the GSCY name out there on the, in the country, making it seem like an elite team and elite group of guys. So I feel like the merge very successful and I'm excited to see what happens in the years to come with the team. Yeah. So th- that seems like a pretty cool thing. And uh, like you said, it, it's, it's gotten the GSCY name out there. Uh, I'm curious you being a New Jersey native. Um, it seems like Cal has established uh, somewhat of a pipeline from New Jersey to Berkeley. Um, you, you know, the, we saw Dari Rose and uh, star freshman. Oh my God, I'm blanking on his name. <laughs> he was he was second the tuner backstroke. Destin. Destin Destin Lasco. Um, you know, both New Jersey natives uh, now at Cal. Now I guess now sophomores at Cal are going into their sophomore years. Um, was that a factor for you at all when you were looking at schools and and Cal in particularly? Um, I'd say a, a little bit. It was a little bit of a factor for me, but definitely not one of the biggest. Um, like factors, I guess, more of the team environment there and the relationship I had with the coaches there, Dave and Chase, was definitely more of, um, more of a bigger factor for me. But I definitely see, and even if we have some guys from Philadelphia in that area going over from Cal, like Reese Whitley, um, the Jensen brothers are over there too. So I feel like there's a lot of East Coast guys that consider Cal. Um, but I feel like that's not one of the main reasons I think, I think people go there for the great team environment and the great coaches there. Totally makes sense. Uh, yeah, I'm just curious because, because like you said, there there are quite a few East Coast guys um, who have ended up there, and it, it just seems like a long way to go. But obviously, uh, when you're thinking about your future, it seems like a great place to go, and, and, and it seems like it's been very worth it for many of, many of those guys who have chosen to be Bears. Um, but I, I had to ask because I thought that was interesting. Yeah. yeah and actually, um, back when I was like really young, I, um, the first time I, like, I heard about Destin was at, um, Eastern zones and I was actually with there with that meet at, with Dari Rose and we've been really good friends since we were really young. So we've established a great friendship already. As well as Destin, I raced against him in the high school championship meets. He's a great competitor. And I'm, I'm really excited to be their teammates next year. That's that's really cool. And um, have have you already been teammates with Dare on a world on a world junior team? Am I getting that right? Yes. Yeah, the past or 2019, we were on the junior world together. Okay, that's what I thought. Um, can you tell me about that experience? I mean, getting getting to be teammates with so many so many top juniors again that are kind of at your level um, or or even above you at that time from around the country, um, and getting to go compete with them. Uh, what do you feel like you gained from that experience? Um, you know, it was kind of um, an adjustment for me because. We've like tons of elite swimmers, like all at the same level, basically. And you kind of see like, wow, these guys are, like really, really fast. And they're just kind of like, just like you. And it, it's kind of a bit, it's kind of puts perspective on things and shows you like what this like sport is kind of all about and what people can take with the sport. But that's that, that, that meet was one of my favorite meets so far. Um, I didn't swim particularly as fast as I wanted to, but you know, coming off, it was my first like double tapered meet I had to go to. Um, plus, like the time zone difference, that was a big adjustment. Plus, like I was, I remember walking out for the uh, I swam the four through relay in prelims, and I remember walking out and I was literally shaking, like going going up to the blocks, and I was really nervous for that. But I hope that was a really good first big like meet experience for me, and hopefully that. Hopefully, I get to experience more of those meets in the future. So, yeah, uh, I mean, it seems like that would be a really good experience to get, especially that was was that 
the summer after your sophomore year of high school? Yeah, summer after my sophomore year. Okay, so you you were sixteen. You you were fairly green, I'm guessing, especially on the international stage. Um, so heading into this summer uh, for Olympic trials, have you ever been to an Olympic trials before? No, it was, this will be my first one. Okay. So what, what, what are you thinking, uh, heading into an Olympic trials? Have you talked to people who've been there before? Have you talked to your peers just kind of about, all right, what do I expect? What goals do I have for myself and, and how would I like to carry myself through that meet? Yeah. So, um, the junior world meet was kind of, I kind of used that as looking back on it. I used it as, um, like a practice run kind of. And I've heard that Olympic trials is very similar to that kind of format. Um, just going through like the multiple ready rooms, um, like no, like the deck is like completely different than other meets, you know that. Um, but I'm kind of, I I know what I'm, I kind of expected, um, expecting that kind of same environment, but also it's gonna be very different, I feel like. <clears throat> and as like for goals myself, I personally just want to improve my times and again, just have a good, great first experience at Olympic trials. Um, <clears throat> so mainly just to improve my times and have a good time. So. It's good goals. <laughs> good times. Have a good time. I like it. Short and sweet. Um, so, so I, 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 I was just curious about that, so I had to ask about that. But let, let's take it back. We mentioned your uh, clubs joining uh, this past September, um, and let's take it back even further. You know, obviously, we've we've been in the pandemic for the last year now. Um, when that hit in March, I know why Nats were canceled. That was one of the first meets to go, and that was a huge shock and a huge hit to the swimming community. Um, can you take me through your first few months of the pandemic? Um, and how you navigated through that, especially starting with that cancellation of YNATS? Yeah, when I when I learned about the cancellation of YNATS, I was obviously really just really disappointed, um, as well as other many other teammates. Mine. Um, but we actually we were gonna go to our New Jersey State meet that weekend, but like literally like an hour before I was supposed to leave my house for that, that got canceled as well. So we were even more disappointed about that too. But um, when things kind of got into lockdown in March, um, we didn't really have the chance to swim until I actually went down to Florida to train with a team in Naples called T2 Aquatics. And they, um, I'm very grateful that I was able to experience that and get some training in. So, but when I was back home in New Jersey, I was, kinda, I was trying to stay active as most active as possible doing um, like the stationary bike sometimes, but really I like, kind of lost all my endurance and training for swimming, which is really unfortunate. But um, I went down to Florida around the end of May. And when I first started getting in the water, it took me about a week or two to get back in shape. But after that, I kind of just pushed forward and was able to get some good training cycles in. And then, when we came, I came back to New Jersey around 4th of July and we were luckily in New Jersey, we were allowed to get some practices in, um, six days a week in the morning. So that was good. Um, but it was a little different. Like people weren't as, in, as good in shape as they used to be. And the training, training environment was a little different and we didn't really have any meets to look forward to. So my motivation wasn't really fully there, but I kind of just tried to push forward and look ahead towards better things and hopefully like get a meet on the radar. Um, so I could have something to work to work for and look forward to. But I feel like a lot of kids um, fell in the same boat as I did and kind of felt like they were just kind of practicing with real focus or real intent of getting any best times or anything. So I feel like that was really hard aspect of this whole pandemic really but luckily when we when we merged in September um our coach put a couple a couple of inter squad meets on our schedule so we, we at least had those to look forward to and something to focus on 
So I feel like that really helps us like motivate us during practice and give us something to focus on in our lives. So you, you bring up a really good point, which I think a lot of swimmers, a lot of people probably can relate to of just kind of drudging through this pandemic and not having things to look forward to, whether that is swim meets, whether that's, you know, for, for maybe, maybe, uh, normal people, you know, vacations or trips. Um, but yeah, I think that was a really hard part of it. Just not knowing, not having an end date for this. Um, we're, were you able to find tools that, that you, that really helped you get through that period? Um, I mean, was, was, I know for a lot of people, swimming can be a solace and, you know, swimming can really help your, your daily mentality. Um, but it seems like through at that point for a lot of people, it, it might've been a hindrance and, and maybe for you, it wasn't, but, um, what, what, what helped you get through that period of just like, okay, I'm swimming or I'm going through life, but I don't really know, don't really have a goal or a purpose. Yeah, I'd say definitely um, my friendships with with other teammates, like some of my best friends I've met when I was eight years old and I'm still swimming with them as of right now. So definitely those friendships, just keeping in touch with them and just having fun during practice with them really and that's like really what I love about the sport too, is just making good connections and friendships with everyone. Um, but I feel like a lot of people as well as me just kind of like during practices kind of just relied on each other to either like have a good laugh or something. Cause we couldn't really like, like do anything other than that. And it brought us like a kind of a sense of normalcy back to our lives after this couple months in lockdown. So I feel like that really helped everyone. That- yeah, that, that seems like a like a good environment to be in when in, in a situation like this, having good teammates and, and being able to laugh with them and push each other, especially. Um, tell me about your time in Florida. So you went down with T2 Aquatics in Naples. Um, you were there for a couple months. Uh, did you know someone on that team prior? How did you end up in Naples? So I met um, one of my friends, Mason visits and my grandparents live in Naples, Florida. So <clears throat> we were kind of looking for around the country, just anywhere to go to train and get some cool time. And I did some research and my mom actually remembered that <clears throat> he was from Naples and she talked to him a little bit on one of our recruiting trips. And I remember that I just reached out, reached out to him and it was really it kind of worked out perfectly in the sense that my grandparents' house was like 10 minutes away from the pool. Um, I was also down there with my younger brother, Rob. And yeah, it was really just a good, good couple months of getting back in the pool and getting some of my endurance and training back. Did, was there, was there a standout practice at all or, or, or something that, that is very memorable that stands out to you in, in that couple months? Um, I remember the first practice I went to, he made us do um, 15-100s best average. And that was the first time I was swimming in <laughs> months. So I was struggling a little bit there. <laughs> so uh, after that, I mean, it took a little time to get back into it. But definitely we had some good best average sets after that. Um, and get it, just getting, I was really excited to get back into it and get some of my endurance back and I was really excited and surprised myself with some of the practices. So it was really great to get, um, some of the training back. Okay. I have to ask for first practice back after, after not having swam for months, 15, 100s best average. What were they on? If you remember, and, and what were you able to hold? If you remember, I don't remember what exactly they were on, but I remember starting out, around 105s and then slowly but surely moving up around 110s in that area but um it was a bit of a struggle there <laughs> that's that sounds rough was that long course no it was short course uh luckily <laughs> okay short course yeah i mean that sounds rough <laughs> but um so then you, you, as you mentioned, you were able to kind of get going and, and get back into some shape and, and surprise yourself. Do you remember a set 
uh, you surprised yourself on or something you were able to do in practice where you're like, Oh, okay. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm back now. Yeah. I remember we did a set involving a couple of fast 200s and I remember holding around like 153s, 154s in that. And at that time I really had no expectations to go that fast from practice. And I was really glad to see that. Well, like, like go back to home. My, my friends are all sitting down with no practices at all. Like, and I'm going, I'm doing over here, going down like 153s and 200s. Like I was pretty um, happy with that and excited to see some of my Durans back. So. So that that seems like a very good uh, progression from 105, 110s best averaged to 153s, uh, 200s. That's that's awesome, and it's it seems like really a cool opportunity that you were able to go and do that. Um, what I have to ask, what was it? Just what was it like training for an extended period with another club team um, whose whose training methods maybe you weren't familiar with, and certainly who you didn't really know many people on the team at, when you came in. Yeah, it was definitely an adjustment for me. Um, at the start, like I didn't, I didn't really know anyone except for Mason there and my younger brother. But we definitely made, made some good connections there in relationships, as well as um, the coach there, Coach Eric. So um, it was definitely like I've I've actually had like basically had to do that all over again this past year with a new coach as well as a whole new training group. So it was kind of a bit of a trial run, so to say. Um, but overall, it was a really great experience. And I was really grateful for it. That's awesome. And yeah, that it, it is really cool how these opportunities seem to come out of the woodwork during the pandemic where, you know, people adjust and, uh, and, and things are able to happen. And, you know, now for the most part, hopefully, uh, most of us are back in the pool. Um, so you had this taper meet, uh, for the YMCA festival. Uh, I love that name. And so then, uh, what's, what's on the horizon for you now? What's training looking like lately? Um, well, I'm actually down in St. Petersburg, Florida right now with, um, Matt Fallon and we're at St. Petersburg Aquatics, um, coached by Fred Lewis. And this has been, I've been, this is my fourth week now here and this is, probably some of my favorite training I've done in my life and some of my favorite practices I've done. It's very personalized and I really love Fred as a coach. He's really smart and great guy. And he really thinks about things I haven't thought about in the past and really pushes you and pushes you during practice. And this is honestly like the most, probably the most um, toughest training I've had since probably in my life, because we were doing, Right now we're doing six days of practice, six days a week, as well as doubles three times a week. And I haven't, I haven't really had a consistent double schedule my whole life. So at first it was a bit of an adjustment for me, but we're definitely getting a lot of good training down here and I've, I've adjusted well and we're just gearing up, right, getting ready for trials right now. Whoa, we buried the lead here. Uh, that's, that sounds exciting. Um, what prompted this, uh, you and Matt to go down to St. Pete for, you said you're on week four. How long is this camp lasting? Um, I'm staying down here, um, until I leave for trials. So around June 10th. Um, but Matt was actually down here in December when New Jersey pools got shut down. Um, we can only like practices were shut down and we don't like, we could only sign up for doing, 45 minutes a day for four days a week at the YMCA, which was, uh, which is not really good as <laughs> training. So no. um, Matt decided to go down the safety and he was, in, he was fortunate enough to train with them for a couple of weeks. And I was just looking for trials. I was looking for like, for, like a better get in and I could train in and in New Jersey, like long schools were all closed and or they wouldn't allow me to go there and train. But luckily Matt stayed in contact with St. Pete and he, um, I, I uh, contacted Fred Lewis and luckily we're both down here with a little of a long course pool <laughs> and we got some great training going in. Uh, okay, so I have to ask outside the pool, 
So you guys have been there for four weeks now. You're going to be there for about another four weeks. Uh, who, who's doing the cooking? <laughs> how, how are you guys living? <laughs> so I'm living, we're actually living at separate locations. He's living with his parents um, and I'm living with my dad. And, you know, my dad, even like he's a good cook. You know, he eats good steak, good chicken, good salmon, all that stuff. Um, we also get a lot of good restaurants around here. So nutrition's not really a problem, but it's, this is my first time living with my dad just by myself with me and him. And I'm really enjoying the time with him as well as creating like a great bond with him. So I'm really enjoying it. That's that, that sounds really cool. Uh, and then again, similar question, you know, new, new club team, obviously, you know, Matt, um, and you've developed a relationship with the coach, but what's it been like, you know, just training with a, another new team? for these past four weeks. Yeah, we got a we got great guys down here. Um, most of them are distance oriented, but we got some good sprint guys that help me push me in practice. And as well as like coach Fred is always like being on me and just having every little thing to work on during practice and just pushing me every day. Um, but nevertheless, we got it's like a great environment down here. I'm really loving it. That, that is such a cool opportunity, and it's it's so great to just hear about uh, what you've been able to do for for your sport and what what you have uh, allowed yourself to do through your dedication to swimming. So that's awesome. Uh, Jack, I really appreciate you taking the time to sit down and chat with me today. I know you've got a busy schedule. Um, any parting thoughts for our audience before we sign off today? Um, I just want to say thank you, Coleman, for having me on this podcast. I really appreciate it. And I really enjoy watching the podcast. So thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, man. I, it, again, it's been great talking to you. And I hope things go well leading up to trials in St. Petersburg. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swim Podcasts on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.